One thing I would like to make a hard rule about is no cross across the floor. We are a lodge committee. I like to see everyone get to say what they feel. You serve on this committee, no matter whether we, man to man, we agree with one another or not. You serve on this committee, you should be doing your homework on this committee, sometimes even out of points of view that are not agreed with. Valuable information comes out of it. The only thing I would ask everybody to remember is, for one thing, we're very large. If on every subject, all right, <laughs> you just took a minute, it's 15 minutes on everything we talk about. Once you go around the room, that's just reality. So sometimes people speak longer, sometimes don't. We can all try to cut back 20 words or less, you know, keep that in mind. Um, but as you go around, as you guys go across with one another, then it takes us forever, and then the very things you come in and complain <coughs> about, meetings going too long, you've created. And, and just to make a point, it's, in my opinion, it's, it causes chaos. It does. It's chaotic, and it's also disrespectful to the chair. So and I that's think when that you get the gavel, and it's like, the le notice I didn't bring anything tonight? How nice I is that? I did. I right. did too. I noticed you didn't. Yeah, it. that's <laughs> that. That's a sign of the new year, guys, and I'm that's what creates it. Okay, is that? Then it's like, okay, <coughs> we're, we're out of control. We're just. We have to acknowledge we are just too big. I've had thoughts in my brain of reducing the size of this committee because it can be done, and I think the more of us, the merrier, because we got a lot of input from a lot of citizens mm -hmm. um, on this committee, and people do listen. But we have to monitor ourselves to keep it under control. I know you're chomping at the bit to say something. Well, I, you know, I'm not real. I'm always sensitive to hard and fast rules like no crosstalk. I'm not quite sure what crosstalk means, but I have a general sense of what you mean by that. And I don't agree with the hard and fast rule on that either. I mean, a uh, perfect example was the last meeting. Uh, it was my turn to speak. And I wanted to ask Richard a question, a clarifying question about a statement that he had made. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think that was perfectly appropriate to do. Did you do it? I did, and and, and Richard asked you, the chair, whether he could answer, and I said I yield to you. You see, I think that's a proper procedure. That if I ask someone a question, I'm yielding to them for the purpose of only answering the question, not giving a speech or anything. And if I'm talking and someone wants to ask me a question, they should simply ask me if, if I'd be willing to yield for a question. And if I am, then I will. If I'm not, then then I just continue on. And that should be true for anyone. It should be a very polite introduction to an interaction, not an automatic interruption. That's what you want to avoid is that interruption. But the simple, I mean, uh, Congress does this all the time. All sorts of bodies do this all the time. Someone starts talking and they might make a, a critical error that's just a misspoken phrase rather than an actual intellectual error. And someone kicks up on it and say, well, you know, I really, like you're saying, correct errors. All right. It's the, I think the proper response is for the person to say, David, do you, would you yield for a question? And maybe David's in a role and he can't yield for a question. Or maybe he'll say, in a moment I'll yield to the question, something like that. But I think just simply asking for to, to yield for a question or, a or asking another member a question on something he had said previously and then yielding to him for an answer. I think that is healthy crosstalk. So I don't want to throw out all crosstalk because it has the potential of being unhealthy because some crosstalk is very healthy. David. I yield to David. <laughs> the, the other side of that, though, is there have been times in this committee mm -hmm. when I was trying to not crosstalk. Mm -hmm where a lot of crosstalk went on and we spent 15 minutes talking about a very minor subject and then we moved on because we've got a whole meeting to cover. So I, I, we've got to have limits. We, everyone should have a right to speak, but I think we need to give everyone on the board a chance to say their two cents. Mm -hmm. We can be brief, but if, if it's crosstalk between two people, the rest of us are sitting here saying, when do I get a chance to throw my two cents in? So You're I, taking I, up somebody else's time. Yeah. So there's two sides to that. And usually I go around the table once, give everybody a chance, mm -hmm. and then there's been very few times where somebody had a second question that we didn't allow to bring it back up. And I think because the committee is so large that 
if you guys accept that, that's how we'll go about doing this here. Because we are large. You talk long. I talk long. I he don't doesn't talk get long to talk much. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Excuse me. If you were actually well, Joe never gets to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> so if, you, if you look at the videos and time me, Joe, you'll, find, you'll, you'll find the people that I ask questions to take a long time answering the question. I don't take a long time asking questions. And I can prove that empirically. Okay. Are you asking a question now, or no? I'm <laughs> <a statement>. Yeah, <laughs> this is an organizing statement. <laughs> no, it is an organizing statement, yeah. and, I, and so I and I do think that this will probably, you know, for what people usually expect out of us, they're probably sorely disappointed. But mm. this is what the committee needs to mm. discuss: is how we're all going to interact with one another in the coming year, because I think it's going to be a difficult year. Every year is a difficult year. It's never easy to ask people to open up their pocketbooks and spend money. More or less, any. I don't know about you, but I still get a tax bill. I, you know, I, I just don't want to throw out healthy cost stock. I, I don't think there was that much of it this year. I really don't. I think you're going around the table and ensured everyone had their chance for the two cents. All right. All right. So, so we'll so use Latimer's rules instead of Robert's rules. I may yeah. make a suggestion, though, following up on uh, Mr. Jones's remark about this, the chairman speaking last. I can remember in previous years. There was a chairman that spoke after everybody and before everybody. <laughs> and that <laughs> multiplied the <laughs> length of the meeting considerably. So if you adhere to that rule, that will reduce that possibility of reoccurring like it happen has happened in the past. Well, I, th I think everybody knows what I'm talking about there. I'll well, tell you what, if it makes everybody happy, I'll draw you a better I don't, picture. I don't it makes everyone happy. I'll speak second to last. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry, that just came out naturally. How about after that? <coughs> well, no, uh, the chair has to be. <laughs> yeah. We we have kind of a practical problem, allowing everybody to speak mm -hmm. when there isn't enough time for everybody That's to speak. That's right. The bottom line is every structure, including the Congress, puts time limits on speaking. There you go. And that's the only objective mechanism you can use that I think has any chance of working.